And we are seeing a shift in the American workplace. Well-being is coming to the forefront now. We've seen record-breaking resignations in this country. And now rest and recovery is a discussion being had among employees and their employers. Destination analysts report more than two-thirds of American workers feel at least moderately burned out. Joining us this morning is Rebecca Ryan. She's an economist and futurist to help us make sense of all this. Good morning to you. What is contributing to this burnout we're seeing among American workers? workers. Has this always been happening and been highlighted by the pandemic or is this something new? Good morning, Ruta Bay. I think we're at a new, um, a new level. I feel like the check engine light is on for American workers because of two years of living under these stressful conditions. So what we're seeing is this dr drastic shift, as you mentioned, from sort of a workaholic environment to one that is shifting to a well-being focus at work. Uh, does the great resignation play a role in this? In other words, are the employees who are still left there working getting more added to their plates? That is absolutely happening in many cases. We're seeing it in employers, public sector employers, private sector employers, as people are leaving. And by the way, a lot of those people who are leaving are doing it to sort of claw back their mental and physical health health, but it is leaving those behind to do a little bit more work. So we have kind of a compounding situation here. So this is something that's interesting to me because I remember having conversations with people in Europe years ago talking about, oh, we had to take time off for burnout. And to Americans, that was kind of laughable at the time. Now the culture has shifted totally. Are people who have more time off uh, more productive or the other way around? Well, there's a balance, right? And every person's sort of, you know, level is a little bit different. But generally, I mean, data going back to the 1940s and 1930s show that American workers can work about 40 hours. And after that, our margin of productivity goes down. So we make worse decisions. We're not as productive. We do need time off. So the other thing that as a futurist, I'm thinking a lot about is the levels of burnout that we're now seeing, like you showed there a moment ago, two thirds of workers are experiencing some burnout. These have long tail effects. So we know that this impacts cardiovascular health, it impacts psychological health, including depression and um, drug use. And if burnout goes on for too long, it obviously impacts us at work as well. And so what does this mean for employers? What message should employers take away? I mean, it's already a workers market, they're already kind of struggling to get and retain people. You're right. And and I, I employers do have a role, but this is both sides have a role. Employees have a role to recognize their burnout and to take their vacation. So you showed some data saying that there were 4.6 days left in most employees vacation banks last year. Take your vacation, take care of yourself, get yourself some rest and renewal, even if it's a staycation. And one thing that employers can do is make it really clear that they value employees taking time off. So bosses, for example, stop sending emails at midnight. Um, set good, good sort of mental health hygiene at work where there are clear starts and stops and take your own vacation as well. All right, all useful information. Times have sure changed. Rebecca Ryan, thank you. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.